Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to discuss a very very important topic that is logically and physically exclusive clocks and we'll try to analyze their difference as well. I try to go through the various internet sources but this subject is made very very confusing so I thought of making this video to simplify this topic so that with examples I can demonstrate what is the difference between logically and physically exclusive clocks. After discussing the examples, I would like to discuss how to constrain these clocks, exclusive clocks properly. Friends, this topic is very very important when you deal with multiplexed clocks. That means multiple clocks are there and they are multiplexed. Only one of the clock is passed to the design. Where clock gating is applied or any other type of power saving technique is applied. And you know these techniques are very very important in today's world where we are using the mobile devices like mobile phone laptops where very battery is very very critical so at all those places these exclusive clocks are used and we need to constrain them properly and now without wasting much time let us get started and see this interesting topic on logically versus physical exclusive clocks friends let us try to define exclusive clocks first the term exclusive clocks refer to multiple clocks that are never active at the same time. Let us take an example of two clocks. Two clocks are there for my design. But if clock A is active, then clock B cannot be active. If clock B is active, then clock A has to be silent. Those clocks are called exclusive clocks. Only one clock can be active at any point of time. They cannot be active at the same time. It appears awkward right but we will take the examples so the topic will be clear. It has two types. First type is called physically exclusive clocks. Another type is called logically exclusive clocks. We will discuss them in detail now. Let us discuss physically exclusive clocks first. The physically exclusive clocks that cannot be physically available on the device at the same time. Amazing right? But let me take an example so that it will be clear to you. This example I took from Intel website. This is the design. Let us say this is the FPGA chip. It can be ASIC chip also. This is one port called the clock port. Two clocks are applied to it through a clock multiplexer. But this clock multiplexer is outside the chip, outside the FPGA. Now with the help of this select line, either clock A can be passed to this clock port or clock B can be passed to this clock port. Both the clocks are different. Let us say that clock A is 100 megahertz, clock B is 25 megahertz. But one of them is passed to the design. Only one clock is available for the design at any given point of time. Either clock A or clock B. So that is why they are called physically exclusive clocks. How to constrain this? We will discuss. Because that is the most important topic, how to constrain these clocks. Now let us see logically exclusive clocks. The logically exclusive clocks are physically active simultaneously. They are active physically at the same time inside the FPG or ASIC chip. But two clocks are not actively used by the design at the same time. And it is because of a logic like multiplexer. Because of this logic, they are exclusive clocks. That is why they are called logically exclusive. Physically, they are working. They are acting. They are active inside the chip. But it is not used by the design because of a logic like multiplexer. That is why they are called logically exclusive clocks. Now, let us make it clear by taking an example. So, this example also I took from Intel website only. The clock multiplexer which was external to the chip, I made it internal to the chip. Now clock A and clock B are applied to the chip through two clock I.O. ports. And both the clocks are applied to the clock multiplexer. And with the help of this select line, we can choose either clock A to be passed at the output or clock B should be passed at the output of the multiplexer. And finally, it is applied to the design. If you see, physically they are available inside the chip. Clock A is available, clock B is also running. But for my design, only one of the clock is active 
and that is because of the logic multiplexers that is why clock a and clock b are now logically exclusive but again friends how to constrain these clocks is very very important friends before discussing the constraints part i have a question for you and i took it from zilin's website so this is the design here the question is are clock 0 and clock 1 logically exclusive so this multiplexer clock multiplexer is inside the fpga only clock 0 and clock 1 are applied through the io pad only but the question is are they logically exclusive or no but the condition here is output of multiplexer is going to this fdm 0 and fdm 1 part of the design clock 1 is going to fd 1 clock 0 is going to fd 0 and there are some paths existing between fd0 and fdm1 fd0 and fd1 fd1 and fdm1 friends now you can pause my video here try to think of its answer you can use internet or any support from ai and whatever comes to your mind please write down in the comment section you so that we can start a discussion there don't worry whether it is correct or no just start a conversation in the comment section otherwise i will reveal its solution in the upcoming video friend the constraining part also i will discuss in the upcoming videos only because otherwise the length of the video will be very long but i promise you i will publish these two videos quite soon and with this i am going to end this video i hope that this would be quite informative for all of you if you also like this video please press the like button and you can share your feedback in the comment section and in future also we are going to create many such videos so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press a bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching and your time